Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and welcome to the return of some of our Grand Prix challenges. Yes, between now and the end of the season, usually after a qualifying session, we are going to be attempting a last question mark challenge, racing as one of the drivers from the F123 grid. And of course, I don't think I could really start this too differently than Max Verstappen, mainly because I do genuinely believe Red Bull, once they've wrapped up the championship, they should try and complete the very first last or first ever in Formula 1. Yes, I know drivers have come from the back of the field to win, but I mean actually qualifying last and winning a GP because I think, you know, if Red Bull have a track that suits their car, that is still absolutely possible between now and the end of the season. Having a look though at our grid here at Suzuka, Lando Norris on the pole ahead of Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz will line up in P3 there on row two, beating out George Russell. Lewis Hamilton, Oscar Piastri make up row three. Alonso and our teammate Sergio Perez in seventh and eighth. They're ahead of Gasly and Alex Albon, the two former Red Bull drivers there. Ocon ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Lance Stroll ahead of Nico Hulkenberg with Kevin Magnussen just ahead of Daniel Ricciardo there. Sonoda in his home race in P17. Zhou Guan Yu, Logan Sargent. And there we are, Max Verstappen lining up at the rear of the field but of course if you're new around here please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed i can say this race quite a dramatic one so i would highly recommend sticking around right to the very end but anyway let's head down trackside then ready for a 35 percent race here at suzuka Right, well, here we are then, trackside for the Japanese Grand Prix, and my first time doing a 35% race then inside F123. 18 corners at Suzuka, 19 laps, and we line up P20 then racing as Max Verstappen, and apparently I've, I've put the broadcast safety car on. I, I guess we'll listen to Crofty. As we near ever closer to the start of the race, which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. The, grid, the drivers will be hoping to get a strong start. They'll want to earn some valuable points from today's race, with final communications being done with their race engineers, ensuring the planned strategies are all in place. Right, we're getting ready then to line up on the grid here at Suzuka. Logan Sargent, the only car on a set of the hard compound tyres, but we need to make sure that we get a good getaway in this one. Got plenty of cars to try and navigate. Let me know down in the comments below as well where you think we'll finish this one and also let me know who's going to win the Japanese Grand Prix tomorrow of course recording this before qualifying I didn't get up at f uh, like half six in the morning to do this funnily enough but waiting on the grid for those five red lights here at Suzuka lights out and away we go trying to get a good clean tidy start looks like homeboy Logan I was about to say homeboy Yuki Sonoda getting a good getaway there but clearly Logan Sargent has been paid off by someone to try and put me in a wall down in towards the first turn there. So no places gained off the start. We know just how much of a Red Bull, uh, how much of an advantage the Red Bull has had this year in Formula One. You know, Singapore still wondering whether that was an outlier or not. But I'm sure by the time this video goes live, I'll probably have a bit of a better indicator as to what Red Bull's pace is like here at Suzuka as we'll try and go down the inside of Logan Sargent then. It's going to be the outside through the first Degner that we make it work. And this is probably going to be one of my best places to make moves as well this afternoon in towards the hairpin. Kamui Kobayashi style and we'll take Zhou Guan Yu as well then. So clean tidy start most importantly of course. Uh, so you want to try and make sure that we keep the car clean. Lando Norris leading the way at the front of the field there. He's got both Ferraris and both Mercedes Still desperate, of course, to try and get a win. You know, Ferrari, could they go back-to-back -back this season uh, for the first time since, what, 2019? I don't think they won back-to-back -back races, did they, in 2022? So, yeah, it's been a long, long time. Uh, maybe they did an Austrian Silverstone. I can't quite remember off the top of my head there. But clearly, top-end speed um, helped when I find eighth gear. Probably quite useful here, but as we make our way in towards the final couple of corners of lap one. Lando Norris still at the front of the field then. So we'll have to wait and see when the DRS comes out this afternoon. But I think this might also be the first time I've driven the Red Bull car inside this game as well. So yeah, interesting to see how we're going to fare in that regard. 
Hopefully we're going to have a lot more downforce than Daniel Ricciardo through this first sector. You know, hasn't quite made his return yet, but looks likely to. Whoa, next weekend out in Qatar, or in a couple of weekends' time, the next race in Qatar. But, you know, all this speculation at the moment surrounding who is going to be driving for Alpha Tari next year. Allegedly, now I'm recording this on Wednesday, allegedly Yuki Snowder is going to get confirmed this weekend. Maybe he already has... Uh, before we get into the weekend, or maybe it's still kind of up in the air at the moment. I'd love to see Yuki get the gig again. I think he's done quite a good job leading that team this year throughout all the turbulence, but whether he will or not, Red Bull can be pretty cutthroat. And with all these talks about how he could go to Aston Martin in the future, obviously with Honda, could he kind of be kicked to the curb by Red Bull for a season anyway? We're trying to get a run then on one of Formula 1's other feistiest drivers. It's Kevin Magnussen, once again, showing his feistiness there. Not really allowing me any kind of opportunity. We look left, we look right, down towards 130R. Couldn't find an avenue this time around. Then we look right into the Casio Triangle. And we're going to be through and up into P16 then. So making good progress at the start of the afternoon. You know, this race is probably going to be a little bit of a slow burn. Uh, but obviously, we just want to be trying to pick off a car a lap. That's what we need to average here if we want to win this thing. On the outside of Nico Hulkenberg. We've got so much grip through the S's. That's going to be another car then. P15. That was Bottas also on a set of mediums. There are a couple of cars on mediums this afternoon. And how will they fare? Right, can we get a run then on the Alfa Romeo? It would be nice if we could enable some of the special liveries that other teams have got inside F123. You know, obviously we did a video over on my second channel this week. Whoa, Bottas. Hello. Um, obviously unlocking the Golf Racing livery for the Williams car at Singapore. So if you're still struggling with that, I'd highly recommend going back and checking out that video. But yeah, obviously you've got a couple of the kick special liveries by Alfa Romeo. Obviously you've got another special Williams livery as well, the Ferrari one, um, obviously from Monza as well. So there are plenty of special liveries inside F123, but just... Clearly, the game doesn't want us to have them yet or be able to use them more often in these kind of challenges. Would love as well the stealth livery. If that gets dropped, I'll definitely be making a video on that. Well, Sonoda as well done another big mover early on this afternoon has closed up to the gap to Alex Alban. He's on a set of mediums, so Williams either going for a very conservative strategy or a very much aggressive one on the switchback for later on. But yeah, we'd love to see Yuki score a point this weekend. In Japan, can I have a look at the inside? No, don't want to have shades of Sebastian Vettel from all those years ago. Alban there, a bit of a wobble though as we head off the corner. And now we're going to be able to try and get a run around the outside of Sonoda. He sees me there. We're going to try and claim the slipstream off of Alex Alban. We're going to get a little bit boxed in around the outside of Sonoda through 130i. You absolutely love to see it. And we will be up then into P13 of the race. And hopefully we're going to make that P12 in just a second. So we should be able to get a run on Alex Alban out of the final corner. Stream DRS, everything like that to the outside of the Williams will look. Former teammate, of course, to Max Verstappen. We'll swoop through there. Chop over his nose ever so slightly. And a move that Kimi Raikkonen would call quite familiar. Asley there, a little bit of a lock-up in front of his teammate Esteban Ocon. Lance Stroll returning this weekend here in Japan after his hefty crash last time out in Singapore. New fastest lap of the day as we head back down towards Turn 1 and Ocon has moved past Pierre Gasly. The Aston Martin wants nothing to do with it as we go down his inside at the first corner. Stroll thinks about looking for a move on the exit. Oh, but can't quite make anything happen as well. Gasly actually does open up the door for us through Turn 2 and Turn 3. And we will say thank you very much then and into the points we go. Well, on just lap six of the race. There, a bit of a wobble as we drop the car off of the curbing. But we're up and we're into P10 then. Ocon should be quite easy to navigate. And then there's a bit of a gap up to Fernando Alonso in P8. Yeah, Ocon again, struggling to put the power down out of Spoon Corner. So we should be able to get right around his outside. Alpino very, very quick down the straights. So we're just actually having to try and use the battery. Oh, I was so scared about where Ocon was going to go there. We'll back out of it. Uh, yeah, actually having to be very, very strategic with the battery there. Just trying to make sure that we stayed alongside the Alpine, but it amounted to nothing anyway. The first car has actually been able to put up a real defence against me as we head out of the final corner. Though I don't think that defence is going to last much longer to the outside 
of Esti Vesti through turn one. And of course, turn two this year famously is going to have yellow and black curbing because uh, Sebastian Vettel at the Japanese Grand Prix putting some beehives in on the exit of the first corner, or the exit of the second corner even, I should say. So apparently, yeah, we're getting some yellow and black curbing um, and a little bee logo on the track as well. I can't be the only one that just thinks that's subliminal messaging for buzzing hornets and Benson and Hedges back in the day. Our team's still happy with the tyres then as we cross over onto lap 9. Charles Leclerc first to blink and potentially try and eye up an undercut on his teammate and race leader. Lando Norris perhaps doing what Ferrari should have done last weekend now in Singapore and pitch Charles Leclerc on a bit more of an aggressive strategy there. Looks like he might come out of a bit of traffic though. But yeah, we're definitely going to be boxing this lap. It's just how close I am to Fernando by the time we call the car in. Close up nicely to the back of Fernando Alonso this lap, but we don't know whether he's going to try and dive into the pit lane as well. Then Perez looking to try and apply pressure to the second McLaren of Oscar Piastri just a little way up the road. But yeah, disappointed in how little progress what he's made today. Bit of a wobble as we head into pit lane. And of course, the other thing I've got to remember is just how stupidly early the Red Bull box is. That kind of took me by surprise. Are we going to get held up, though, in the pits? No, doesn't look like it. And Stroll there maybe just cost us a tenth or two. But we seem quite happy with that as we're going to head back out onto the circuit then. Looks like Leclerc stuck a little bit behind Logan Sargent. But, yeah, he's got a lot of work to do late on this afternoon. But he has got the jump, though. He is to the lead, or the net lead of the Grand Prix. I should say. So, Charles Leclerc making good work then. For about five seconds, six seconds behind those race leaders. He's also put the Williams of Sargent between him and everyone else. This also gives us a fantastic opportunity to try and take time out of all of those cars still stuck behind Logan Sargent. The gap's already come down two seconds this lap alone. They're even now battling behind him. Carlando side by side as we make our way through the final chicane. Sergeant now does dive into the pit lane. So looks like we might struggle for fuel actually in the second half of this one. So we're going to have to be careful and keep a watchful eye on that. But Carlando again side by side as we actually get the jump on Perez. Oscar Piastri heading back out onto the circuit. Whoa, just in front of me but not for long. Around the outside of the second McLaren will go. And now we've got a mega battle going on for P2. Charles Leclerc, definitely the big winner in all of this, but it's also George Russell who seems to have gained quite nicely up into a net P2 then of the day once we see Albon and those Alfa Romeos into the pit lane. But he's going to be under a lot of pressure late on there as he's instantly trying to look around the outside. I want to say that's of Joe Guanyu, but don't hold me to it. At the moment, I think he's swept round him through 130R. Looks like he has... Yeah, we need to try and get inside the DRS range of Lewis Hamilton here and just see where we're going to be able to try and make places up in the dying stages. Have we picked up the DRS? No, we have not. As yet, yeah, two cars into the pits, though. New fastest lap of the day. That is Bottas and Albon in. So, yeah, Zhou Guanyu now causing a train. Now we've got to start taking opportunities, though. We need to try and get a bit of a run on Hamilton. So we head down in towards the hairpin. Down the inside we'll go of one of our biggest rivals and threw up into P6 then of the race. Can we try and get around the outside of Lando Norris who looks set to win this race early on? But the safety, uh, sorry, the pit window, sorry, has just not served him well there. Oh, little, almost contact between myself and the McLaren, but we're through up another one. Can we now try and get a run on Carlos Sainz that will get to the inside of him? But that might not be such a good idea there. We're going to be three wide almost as we head down Towards 130R, they're just not quite able to get the run I needed. Joe Guanyu very, very hesitant as well, though. Lando's coming back at me. This is great racing here at Suzuka, but we muscle our way past Joe Guanyu there, who is just getting bullied out by other cars late on. George Russell steals my fastest lap back off me. We need to try and get a run on Sykes, though, as we head back down in towards Turn 1, but we haven't got much in the way of battery anymore. I'll be going to be able to try and find a way around the Ferrari. Not enough grip around the outside of Turn 1. Yeah, Russell and Leclerc streaking into the distance. Unless we can find a way around Carlos Sainz through these next couple of corners. No, not with a line like that, we won't. Oh, Carlos again. A little bit of a wobble as we head out in towards 130R once again. Starting to get a little bit concerned about the amount of fuel saving we're going to have to do late on in the day here. But we just about get to the inside of Carlos Sainz, my former teammate. 
back at Toro Rosso. Can we try and hook it up around the outside? Just about going to be able to get reined him. And we are now up and into P3 then of the Grand Prix. We've got six laps to go. The gap, six seconds to Charles Leclerc. We've got yellows out. Someone's going slowly. Safety car right now could do us a world of good. Don't know who it is. Oh, it's Oscar Piastri in the second McLaren. And just after he's confirmed a new long-term deal with McLaren, he is out of the Japanese Grand Prix. And we have got a safety car. We have got a chance late on. And we also get to save a load of fuel. A red flag, even. Okay. That's really spiced things up then late on in the afternoon. So now, we might be screwed on fuel. This game doesn't simulate fuel use under red flags very well. Um, are we about to be in deep trouble right at the end of this? Um, softs to the end is definitely going to be the way to go. But effectively now, we've got a three-lap sprint to the end of this one. Everyone has gone back onto softs. Five red lights once again. There's the lights out. And away we go. Or oh, not if you George Russell there. Absolutely a sitting duck as we head down towards Psalm 1. And yep, that's going to immediately post us up then into P2 of the race. And it looks like the fuel save actually has worked properly under red flag conditions this time. Hamilton swooping through and up into P4 there as Lando Norris gets bogged down. As the three Brits duke and out just like they did a week ago in Singapore. But now we've got plenty of time to try and apply some pressure to Charles Leclerc. Again, though, we're going to have to save fuel still. It's not going to be easy. You know, we are going to have to manage that towards the end of this thing. But we might have to wait for the DRS because Charles Leclerc is flying. We're just making, keep, making sure that we keep Charles Leclerc in the range then. As we start lap 17, three laps to go. And team actually want me to dive into the pit lane again. Have to put an extra set of tyres now into the game for it to make sure that you don't get screwed on strategy. But are we going to be able to hang close enough to Charlie? Are we going to save the fuel? And are we going to get a run? Two laps to go, starting lap 18. But the problem we've got here at Suzuka is that the DRS is only enabled into the final lap, of course, because the detection point is right at the end of the lap. We don't get two chances at it. We are going to get one run here on Charles Leclerc. Will we be able to make it count? Oh, we are still floating right there on the fuel, minus 0.01 laps at the moment. And are we going to be able to try and get a run on Charles Leclerc? You can see he just goes a bit defensive in towards the Casio Triangle, as now we should pick up the DRS. Now we might be able to get a run out of the final corner there, around the outside of Charles Leclerc, as we head back down in towards the first corner. But now we know as well, the AI are going to start draining their battery, and we've still got to try and fuel save a little bit here. For the first time today, we lead the Japanese Grand Prix. Is it going to be in a similar vein to Kimi Raikkonen all those years ago? It was 17th on the grid for him. It is going to be P21 on the grid. Sorry, P20 even on the grid for us. But of course, we have been aided by a red flag. No, 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 no. I hope I ran wide there. I haven't made that mistake all day long. Luckily, we don't drop the back end, but we do lose the place. To Charles Leclerc, and now we're just going to have to go all out on the rest of this final lap there. How did I drift wide? Haven't had an issue with that all day. Just trying to be super smooth with the car, and it's not worked for me. We need to try and get a run at a spoon on Charles Leclerc, but you can see he's also now using all of his battery to try and build up any sort of gap he can. Have we just gifted Charles Leclerc the race victory here at Suzuka? He gets a big wobble, though, at a spoon corner. We're going to have to just drain the battery. As we head down in towards the final corner, I don't care now about the fuel. If we finish, if we run out of the line, we run out of the line. You can see Charles also having to save battery as well as we're trying to look around the outside then. Into the Casio Triangle we go. This is side by side for the victory here at Suzuka. But Charles Leclerc has got nothing left out of the final corner. We've gone into low fuel mode though. Will it conk out? Yes, it will. But we hang on. It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. What do you think it was today, Ants, that gave them the edge over the competition? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. 
let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? Often my go-to would be a driver who's managed to pull off an especially impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Max Verstappen's solid, clean driving throughout the event. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, I'm not sure you can do much more of a spectacular feat than last to first in Formula 1, but that's exactly what we've achieved here today then. 69 thousandths of a second between myself and Charles Leclerc at the end of the GP there. And I tell you what, if Suzuka delivers a race as dramatic as that, I would be very, very happy there. Russell beats Hamilton, Alonso beats Perez, Lando Norris from pole to seventh in the end. A very disappointing day for him out of Lance Stroll and both of the Alpines there. No idea what happened to Carlos as well to drop down to p11 but thank you all so much for watching if you've enjoyed please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed and we'll be back very very soon with more formula one content a massive thank you to all of my youtube members and my patreon supporters for their continued donations to help my work these things go much further than i think a lot of you ever realize and allow me to continue making content full time here on youtube so if you want to support me from as little as one pound a month and be featured on all of these end clips either click the join button next to the subscribe or head over to my patreon there's a link down in the description